Hello, everyone. Hope everyone is fine. It's a wonderful day. Thank you again for joining us on Shift Enterprise Wi-Fi in the Residence. Okay, guys, so this is episode six. This is actually going to be the last episode of this installment of Shift. We have a lot more content that we're going to roll out for you, but this is the last episode in this installment. So let's recap what happened in session five. Now, session five was focused on you actually understanding the results of the Wi-Fi survey done in session four. So in session five, we actually documented the present issues within the residence and looked at the survey that was done. So we, we looked at the survey that was done the episode before, and we actually sat down and took note of the actual issues that you, the homeowner, have been experiencing within the residence to be able to put that into context. Then we interpreted the Wi-Fi survey results. You know, these results, how could these results actually create the issues that, that you are experiencing? We looked at the proposed coverage areas because remember guys, though we're actually looking at the issues in the environment, we're looking at the issues and performing the surveys with an idea of moving forward. So we have to look at what you expect and what the actual you know, what, what do you want from coverage within your actual residence, all right? As well as we went on to look at the expectations in terms of what applications are you going to use? What devices are you going to use? What is my family going to use? What devices and applications are going to be used within my residence on this Wi-Fi platform? So we looked at all of those things in the last session, episode five. Now, Again, we're building on each episode, guys. So this episode is, you know, fairly exciting for me because this is where we actually take the rubber and we hit the road. We start to run with all the information that we actually, we've actually picked up in the sessions before. So bear with me, guys. We have a, a huge learning objective for this session. So this is what I expect from the homeowners that have been making the journey with us during these sessions. I think that the homeowner should now be able to use everything that you've learned, guys. So everything that you've learned from episode one straight up to now, right, over the last few weeks, you should be able to take everything you've learned and use that to develop a plan and a full coverage map for what your residence should look like. In other words, having done all of this, understanding all the issues, understanding the challenges, being a little more, you know, educated with respect to how Wi-Fi is measured, how is coverage distributed, et cetera, et cetera. What will a coverage map look like for my house, in my view, based on my newly gained knowledge? All right, that's the learning objective, guys. Let's move forward. From an agenda perspective, we're going to review the documented issues and expectations, all right? These are some of the stuff that would have come forward from last week. We are also going to discuss the resolution options. Let's, let's talk about it. So we've looked at these issues. What happens now? All right. Then we're going to let's look at the actual coverage map. Let's build this coverage map, guys. What, what would the, the ideal coverage map of my house look like? And we're going to recap the actual series. So a pack session. But again, let's continue having fun. All right, so review documented Wi-Fi issues and expe expectations. So guys, again, this is a slide that came forward from the last session, but again, building on what we've learned, everything we should be able to put into context. So let's go it over. All right, these are the issues. Laptop often buffers while watching Netflix while in outdoor seating areas. So we identified that we are having challenges with some of the outdoor seating areas, in particular, the outdoor seating area that's further to the back, the one to the side, right? We've also identified that sometimes you have problems in the garage while working from home, all right? The measurement in the garage wasn't exceedingly high, but again, based on what has been reported, sometimes you have issues. We also have to remember, as we keep mentioning in each session, the readings that you've, get, you've gotten so far are based on the perspective of, that, perspective of that particular device. So these readings can change if other devices are used. So, for instance, negative 60 is not going to be negative 60 on another device, and it may not be negative 60 tomorrow. So we have to be very fluent with that thinking. We're also saying that 
I can browse web pages from anywhere inside, but I have, but I have issues, issues streaming YouTube videos from the certain areas and generally the outside. So we're identifying that the outside of the house is primarily where you have some coverage issues. Now, this guy, to be very honest, this coverage scenarios that, that we, we, we recorded in the surveys in the last sessions, it's not ridiculous. It's not exceedingly bad, right? But it's still, there are still some issues. So the idea is to be able to empower you guys, look at the issues and let's work it out. Okay, again, this is another slide we brought forward. Again, to keep creating context here, guys. I expect coverage of all areas of my house and external compound. So as a homeowner, you're being very realistic. I've spent money on this solution. I want or I expect coverage throughout my house and outside. You have devices in your house. You want to be able to use your three cell phones, your three laptops, your tablet, and a smart TV. That's fine. Let's work that out. And you've also identified the applications that you, you plan to use, give or take, everything else that you may want to use in the future. All right? We also identified, again, the coverage area. The average home user, again, being very realistic, you want your entire compound covered. All right? And again, guys, this is not something that may be capable with one, maybe done by one access point, but that's, that's irrelevant right now. We're looking at the issues and identifying what was brought forward in the last sessions. All right, the survey results, not to stay too long on this slide, we've seen this slide probably in the last two sessions. These are the results in DBMs that we picked up when we did the actual survey using Wi-Fi Analyzer the last time. Again, you see the negative 16 to negative 65 on the outskirts of the compound. It is said that they are having some issues on the, out, the external areas of the residence. Let's move forward. Resolution options. So having said all of this, having brought all of those things back into, into context, what can we do? You as the homeowner, so I've understood how to, to, to do a high-level survey, I've understood the issues, et cetera, et cetera, guys. We, we've, we've talked a lot over the last few weeks. What do you do? There are many options that you can actually use to attempt to resolve these issues, guys. And as we've said in many sessions, this is not a hard and fast thing, meaning that there are many other factors that can influence wireless access and wireless coverage, but we're trying to stick to the basics right now. So the first thing I would recommend is look at AP or access point placements, right? Access points are normally deployed low and near devices that can cause interference. I'm sure if you guys walk to where your access point is right now, it's either close to your TV, right? where it was delivered by the provider or where, wherever. It's either on a desk next to a computer monitor or something like that. These devices are normally deployed low and access points are actually designed to operate better when they're placed in higher situations like ceilings, etc. because of how coverage flows. All right, sometimes they're normally placed next to, you know, some people have them next to microwaves. I've personally seen access points close to microwaves, again, based on where they were deployed close to steel and, and aluminum um, shock tiers, next to refrigerators, next to glass, etc. All these things play a factor in how signals are propagated. So in terms of access point placements, please explore the options of moving those access points, not just away from areas of potential interference, but as you see lower down, move them into locations that could actually provide increased propagation or better propagation of signal. Let's look at some of the options. Explore options to move access points to higher locations. So in this case, let's say in your house, your access point is, is, is on a, a bookshelf and that bookshelf is low. All right. And, you know, the access point, the, the Wi-Fi signals have to come over walls. It has to go through walls. It has to go through doors, etc. The higher you put that access point, the better you create the better situation or scenario you create for signal propagation. So explore moving those access points to higher locations. Remove them from potential areas of interference. Remove them from sitting next to the TV screen. Right? Remove them from next to microwaves. If they're sitting next to glass windows and so on, remove them from that. 
explore moving access points closer to areas that require more intense coverage. Right? As you will see in the, in the diagram that we move forward to look at. Take, for instance, if you have an access point that has to provide coverage to a bedroom, that's three, three rooms down the corridor, and the access point is to the front of the house in the living room, and you have three rooms, that's essentially like six walls for that access point to go through. It's already in a low position. The signal strength is exceedingly high in the living room because it sits in the living room in an open space. You can try to move that access point closer to that room. Actually, while you're moving it, check the signal strength difference within the living room. You may or you may not affect it based on whether it's an open area, you know, you're just moving it down the corridor, etc. Explore moving the access points where you can actually increase the signal strength in one area and not necessarily reducing it in the area that you're moving it from. Right, and we'll see examples of that, guys. Those are very, very valid, valid options. Again, when we talk about wireless, you know, the, the thought process is normally that once you have a wireless device in your house, everything that's capable of going wireless can go wireless. But we need to understand that Wi-Fi is still a shared medium, meaning every device that connects to a wireless network is actually sharing that space. Every device has to share that space. So there are situations where you'll have contention and so on. All right, so if you have 10 devices on a wireless network, those 10 devices have to listen to understand when it's clear to send data and then send data. So that, that's a continuous fight for airspace. So if there are situations where you can reduce the amount of devices on that wireless network, by actually looking at devices that can actually take physical cables, devices that are stagnant, like smart TVs. I would recommend that if a smart TV can take a cable and that it's not exceedingly difficult to get a cable to that smart TV, I would recommend cabling the smart TV, have the smart TV use wired connectivity and the devices in the house that are totally mobile use wireless connectivity. All right, there's nothing against a smart TV using wireless. I'm not saying that. But in situations where you need to move the access point and reduce Wi-Fi coverage from a particular area to increase Wi-Fi coverage to another area, you can explore options for stagnant devices, plugging them in rather than using wireless. And you can get very, very, very good performance as well. All right, so that's another option, using wired. And again, guys, there's also the option to reach out to us. All right. We've seen in many cases, guys, that the demands of Wi-Fi right now in the residence are not the demands that were placed on this technology two years ago, three years ago, even a year and a half ago. All right. Things have changed. The residents now, in some cases, use as much Wi-Fi as the small business or small enterprise. There are some houses like that, guys. All right, we have to look at the technology in, in that way. It's, it's, being rec it's being used, it's being demanded. All right, and that demand has changed. All right, so reach out to us. Some of the solutions that we're recommending here, those are basic solutions. You can have solutions that require change in the technology. Let's be real, there are some access points right now in residences that generally cannot take the load. So you can reposition up, down, carry down the corridor, et cetera. Some may not, may just not be able to deal with it. And you need enterprise level or enterprise grade or commercial grade wireless devices, which is what we provide. So reach out to us, all right? Now, look at, let's look at the coverage map. So we've suggested some stuff in the slide before. Let me go back to it. We suggested look at the access point placement, all right? Move them away from areas of inter interference. Look at the placement, you know, whether they are too low and so on. Put them at ceiling level, et cetera. We've also said that explore options for wired rather than just think that everything should go wireless to reduce the overall request on the airtime or airspace. All right, and again, if all else fails, reach out to us. Let's look at this option. So in this option, let me get my pointer. 
in this option, we did a few things. We actually, this we used, we connected the smart TV because this was one of the devices that the user had a smart TV. We connected the smart TV direct, directly to the wireless router. So this smart TV no longer uses Wi-Fi. So there's no contention for airspace, no, et cetera, et cetera, all right? We've also actually moved the access point closer down the corridor, all right? Because remember guys, there were issues to the back here and some issues to the side and even some issues to this side with respect to wireless coverage. So moving that access point in this direction can increase the coverage here. And again, I advise you, when you do things like this, go back and do your survey. Do a survey after you've made the changes to see whether or not they make a difference. All right? So this access point has been brought down the corridor as well and mounted on the ceiling. Now, I want you to, to, to draw, I want to draw your attention to the other symbols on the diagram. So this up here represents a tablet. This represents a cell phone. This represents a laptop, typical devices in a home. All right, remember the user pointed out that they want to be able to use all the devices, laptop, tablets, and cell phones. So we've actually indicated in this coverage map, essentially that you're going to be able to use the devices anywhere. In the master bedroom, this user is saying, primarily they use tablets and cell phones in the master bedroom, all right? And sometimes in the bathroom, all right? They also use tablets, and cell phones in the corridors as well. Laptops in this bedroom, which is probably the child's bedroom, and cell phones and tablets, and in the home office, all devices. In the garden and outdoor seating areas, primarily the tablets and cell phones. In the garage, tablet, cell phones, and laptops. Kitchen, tablet, and cell phones. Porch, likewise. And the living room, they use all the devices. So this is what a high-level coverage map would look like. You've identified the areas that you want to be covered. So you are making the decisions here. You are making the decisions. After learning what you've learned, you've identified the areas that you want covered. You've identified the devices that are going to be used in your environment. Previously, you've also identified the applications, the Netflix, the YouTubes, and the other applications for video and so on, and browsing. And you've actually identified, okay, this is more than likely the devices that are going to be used in the relevant areas of the um, of the house and you model for that you've even identified the optimum access point placement so you the homeowner guys you are now empowered and you know what two years or a year down the road you change devices you make adjustments to your house you can still do this over you can still do this exercise again and again, if this doesn't work, give us a call. The access point may not be sufficient for providing the necessary coverage within the household. That is a very, very, very real option as well. All right, guys, I'm so, I'm so happy. I'm so happy I'm, and I really, really hope that you guys would have been able to take the information and use it. All right, so let's just close and recap. So episode one, we spoke to you, we introduced the shift. What is different in the residence these days? What are the things that are happening? The increase in video, the increase in um, remote work, the increase in calls, etc. all online, right? That has changed the landscape. Episode two, we spoke to a customer that actually experienced the shift. We work with this customer, address their issues, outfitted their multi-story location with enterprise level technology, and they have no more issues, All right? Wi-Fi is very, very real and very, very critical for their, for their um, scenarios. Episode three, we understood Wi-Fi coverage, we understood DBMs, we understood RSSI, all right? We spoke about milliwatts, and we actually looked at how an AP actually covers a location. In episode four, we went a little deeper. We looked at actually delivering a Wi-Fi survey for your residents. All right, in episode five, last week, we looked at, okay, how do we read that survey? 
all right, and put into context the issues that occur within the household, put that in the context of the survey. And episode six, which is now, how do we take everything and build that coverage plan so I can tell somebody, all right, who is coming to my house to do something. Guys, this is what I have in my house. These are the applications that I'm going to use. I have done a high level survey and these are the readings that I'm getting. So I know what to expect. I am the homeowner. I am empowered. All right. You can speak to me and I now have an understanding, guys. I hope this has helped you. Again, thank you very much for the time. Thank you for being part of this experience. Thank you for, for being part of SHIFT. Reach out to us if you have any issues, if you want to just bounce stuff off of us. Or if you know what, if you want to eliminate all your Wi-Fi issues in your residence or even your business, give us a call at 223-1576. That's country code 868 or email us at sales at bluenetworks.com. Thank you for making the shift, guys. We are Blue Networks.